Hello everybody, welcome to this month's Agricology Vlog. Anybody that's a regular viewer of my vlogs will know that I'm a big fan of samphoin and I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about how it's coped with this very, very dry summer. You know, it's been desperate and it's gonna be desperate for quite a lot of people this year because we just haven't been able to get those second and third cuts that we'd normally have taken now. We're up in this samphoin field. This is actually the field that I showed you uh, where we ploughed, drilled and how I incorporated the samphorn. It's now in its second season. We've had two cuts from this field. The first cut yielded about eight tonnes to the acre and we took it as a juvenile plant this year. So I normally wait until about mid-flowering to mow it and ensile it. But this year we carried out a little experiment and had it analysed each week um, building up to silaging. And we found that it dropped about 2% in protein quality every week that you left it. So taken as a slightly more juvenile plant this year, um, it yielded this eight tons to the acre, it's gone into the silage pit. Annoyingly, I haven't got the analysis back, but I'm fully expecting it to be sort of around that 17, 18% protein with a great ME. And as soon as I've got it, we'll get that posted on Agricology so that you can follow it. You can see from the greenness of this actually, and we haven't had any rain since the end of May. There was a Sunday a couple of weeks ago, I hope you got it, uh, where it rained sort of fairly consistently for a day, but you know, and it's back up to 28, 30 degrees again for the following two or three days, and it hasn't done any good at all. So you can basically say we've had this extremely drought weather conditions. We took a second cup from here on the 10th of July. It's the 7th of August today. So it's given you an idea of how it's recovered. You'll remember that when we drilled it, I talked about how we drill the samphoin and then we use an iron bock and just um, scatter a bit of native grass seed in there and it'll be coxfoots and timothies and that type of thing. And that's just to suppress weeds. But just looking at this field now, you can see that the samphoin hasn't really been affected by the drought and the plant is there so they're forecasting a little rain this weekend let's hope that we get it and i think that we'll get a really decent third cut off this uh, sometime in september we've had enough samphoin this year to get it all into separate silage pits so as we go on and if you don't mind and you're still interested i'll talk to you about the feed quality and what difference that's made to our dairy cows we've actually got it all for dairy cows um, this time. Uh, if we'd have had a better year and it had grown a lot better I might even have shut some up and made some samphoin hay but hey we'll save that um, until next year. Of course feed value and the quality of the feed that we make in the summer is, ulti is the ultimate of ultimate importance um, for the health of our stock through the winter and I found that the more time you spend you know making sure that that forage can serve in the uh, spring and early summer uh, really does pay dividends in the winter remember you know it's a ruminant stomach you're feeding it to you want a nice fibrous diet one that's palatable but again has this protein and me that's the one that always interests me metabolizable energy how much energy can the animal extract from that feed and turn it into energy that it can then utilize to grow or perform really well it's giving the animal all of the roughage and natural feed it needs for that ruminant stomach plus this super quality to perform at a very high standard. Okay, so we've come down now to the middle of the farm, land slightly heavier here. And this is a red luck clover lay and it's an old lay actually. I think this is its sixth year. I would normally put it in for three years and then plough it in and grow a cereal crop afterwards to harvest that legumous goodness that the red clover has left. But it's such a great crop and we've had so many wonderful crops of silage from it. So I've sort of stirred away from ploughing it up and putting it into rotation. However, this year it has to come out. It's just about exhausted now. Had we have had a wet season, we would have got two really good crops from this. Um, and I reckon you know, we'd probably do something like 25 tons a hectare of red clover silage from this country. It too has been drought resistant in places. We're actually in a part of the field here where it's particularly heavy, so I guess it's held on to the moisture quite well. Now, 
the thing with red clover is, is that yes, it's a great animal feed, but you do need to be careful with it. When grazing it, you have to bear in mind that it's very high in oestrogen, the female hormone. So I would avoid grazing ewes or bulling cows six weeks either side of mating. It really doesn't make a difference if you put ewe lambs on here. If I put fat in, uh, if I put store lambs and I put fat in them, I'll get them on this red clover. I can get them doing about 300, 350 grams a day, but you'll see those ewe lambs growing little udders. Is, you know, it's not a myth, it is high in oestrogen. It's a very nice silage. We'll mow it one day, leave it to wilt for 24 hours and pick it up and you get that bulk. And I have got pits full of just red silage at the moment. Then mix and feed the wagon with other various types of, of forage for the cows uh, and indeed sheep that are housed in the winter. Red clover plays an enormously important part in organic agriculture because it's very easily established. Now, we're at the 7th of August today and we'll be looking, well the ideal time to get your grass lays established is the last week in August, the first week in September. If it's in stubble, what I do is we would have taken the cereal crop off, baled the straw and then we'll just scratch the top a little bit, spread our grass seed on and then roll it in really tightly so it really is a min-till incorporation of grass seed. The other way of course is to under sow um, cereal crops and then just let it get away after the harvest. We tend not to do that too much on this heavier ground just because I want to get a really nice smooth finish on the grass lay. It's in for, it might be in for five years and I want to be able to drive across it and not take myself to death but it's a, it's a low, um, a low uh, incorporation output to get that seed into the ground last week in August first week in September it'll establish itself quite well you won't see a lot of it this autumn but next spring you'll see the red clover will get away and it really strengthens itself up other great advantage of red clover if you've got dirty ground and you get red clover really well established it will blanket and smother out 99% of the weeds. Rarely have I grown a crop of red clover that's been dirty with weeds. If it is dirty next spring what I'd do is I'd get the guys to come out and top it as early as possible that'll knock the weeds back but the red clover will actually see it as a really good pruning and get away really well and smother out those weeds so rarely have I seen dirty red clover crops again a really good feed and it analyzes really well and I'm going to show you all of those next time we do a little vlog for agricology mm -hmm.